For more on the topic, we're joined by Sarah Shu. She's the Assistant Professor of Economics at the State University of New York. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So, Sarah, as we just saw in the report, the growing middle class in China has capital to deploy, but the investment options are rather limited. Why is that? Well, investment options are limited because uh, financial markets are somewhat underdeveloped, as we have seen. Um, we've noted that uh, the stock market experienced um, a lot of volatility last summer, and uh, we saw um, a huge sell-off in corporate bonds um, in the first half of this year. So the uh, existing financial markets have not been able to uh, sufficiently deepen in order for the government to expand markets to other areas. Chinese traditionally favor real estate. Uh, they have invested significantly in the domestic real estate market. How are the returns in that market being perceived now? The returns in that market are still good. Um, they're still uh, property price uh, appreciation. And um, we know that despite government attempts, local government attempts to tamp down property prices, uh, in September, for example, we saw an 11.2% rise year on year um, for property prices. So the returns still look, still look appealing. Back still doesn't mean that they're appealing enough to keep the dollars at home. There's been a growing trend of buying real estate abroad in big capitals like New York, like London, San Francisco, Paris. Do you see that trend continuing? The trend is continuing, and um, this is happening even despite the presence of capital controls that the government has used to try to discourage both individuals and firms from um, pulling their money out overseas. And um, it's happening in the major cities. It's also turning to cities that are uh, closer inland, like Detroit and Memphis in the right. United States. Sarah, you mentioned uh, the Chinese equity markets. You mentioned the well, the correction that we saw last summer, year to date, the Shanghai Composite is down about 10%. What would you say the mom and pop retail investors, which makes up the majority of investors in Chinese stock markets, how is their appetite for equity risk at the moment? Well, it's relatively low. Um, a lot of investors have turned to uh, investing in other types of assets, certainly property. Um, those who cannot afford property investment have turned to um, investment outlets like Bitcoin um, or especially gold. Um, and so those other types of assets have been appealing to them. Well, let's talk about gold because the Chinese do like to invest in gold, but it's hard gold. It's the actual metal more so than gold futures. And the Chinese government has been promoting the ownership of gold and silver to its citizens to, since 2009. Why is that the case? Um, the Chinese government uh, is interested in allowing its citizens to hold assets that may not be very volatile. And um, gold is considered, although the prices can fluctuate, as we saw in the process of the Great Recession, um, gold is considered relatively safe. Let's talk about something that may not be so safe, these wealth management high yield products. Chinese investors seem to be flocking to them. They're very popular, but the Chinese government has said that they may or may not back them up should they fail. Talk to me about that. Yes, it is of great concern. Um, the wealth management products have consistently been purchased by, um, by Chinese investors. And they assume that the, governments will be bail the government will bail out these products. Um, the products are increasingly tied to other products and underlying assets that could uh, be very volatile, that could experience non-performing. Um, Why is it assumed that the government would step in? Uh, it's assumed that the government will step in because they often do. Uh, we saw that with the stock market. We've seen that in uh, previous um, wealth management product potential defaults, like with uh, China Credit equals gold number one in 2013. But the government has tried to dissuade investors from flocking to these products. Has, has that been working? It has not. Uh, they really have few other outlets uh, to invest in. And the products are becoming increasingly risky. So it is of greater and greater concern. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Sarah Shu, Assistant Professor of Economics at the State University of New York.